Welcome to the course on Computer Forensics and Investigations. We are going to start chapter number 12 today and the title of the chapter is Mobile Device Forensics and Internet of Things which we call IoT as well these days. Let's go through the objectives of this chapter. We'll be explaining the basic concepts of mobile device forensics then we'll be describing the procedures for acquiring the data from mobile devices. It's a bit different than uh, getting the data from uh, the computers uh, there will be different tools and technologies used since the technology of the mobile phones is slightly different than the computers we'll summarize the challenges and uh, forensics uh, acquisitions of data stored uh, on internet of things or anything devices like that now let's understand the mobile device forensics people store wealth of information on their mobile phones people don't think about securing their mobile phones there are still lots of guys over there who don't uh, set the password on the mobile phones whether they are biometrics or the pattern or any pin code on the mobile phones it's a big tactic these days like if you want to receive a call you can receive a call but if you want to use your mobile phone you'll have to enter the pin code or the pattern on the screen uh, but thanks to the biometrics now with the fingerprint you can easily uh, unlock the mobile phone or through the camera where the phone would recognize your face now the amount of information that we have stored on our mobile phones is uh, quite intense uh, whether it's about uh, incoming and outgoing messages, calls, uh, WhatsApp, uh, emails, any instant messaging applications, websites that we are accessing, and the passwords of those websites, uh, if it's not synchronized, it would be saved on the same mobile device, plus the pictures and videos that we are saving constantly on our mobile phones. Now, there are logs generated for each and everything in the mobile phone, whether you're sending a message, you're receiving a message, the pictures that you took, all the meta tag associated with the pictures, locations, GPS, each and everything is being stored on the mobile phones. Now, if someone gets access to that mobile phone and if it wasn't protected, even if it was protected, there are ways to unlock the mobile phone. All that information can be compromised like the other person can instantly copy the data from your mobile phone um, to the computer uh, the best way to protect that is in order to um, uh, stop the breach or the leak of the information is to have proper security principles and force biometrics and stuff like that plus we must be aware that if our mobile phone is stolen or smashed or it's missing or any scenario like that we all know that on Android phones and even on iOS, there is an option that you can remote, remotely wipe off the entire mobile phone. So all the data on the mobile phone would be wiped out. Second option is that you can contact the cellular company if you had a SIM card in the mobile phone. They would ask for an IMEI number and the proof of purchase and they can disable it from the central network. So that mobile phone will not be... Uh, functional in the entire country because it's a national database where they are blocking the IMEI number of the mobile phones um, and with that the mobile phone becomes uh, useless if someone uh, sold it or if someone is using it but still the information which was on the mobile phones uh, that's uh, being leaked out and uh, you'll have to be very careful about it that uh, what kind of information you're saving on the mobile phone and uh, uh, what information is in the cloud further the information about the calendars your address books your social media accounts your gps data related to where you were moving about in the past one month or one year or depending since when you're maintaining that mobile phone all the voice recordings voice notes uh, bank account information access to your home location and uh, lots of other things which uh, could be of a very highly conf confidential nature uh, so that's why it's very important to keep a track of it on the other hand all this information becomes very handy for the investigators if they want to find out uh, about an individual's and his activities uh, since the nature of the data which is found on the mobile phones is quite personal so a proper search warrant is needed in order to investigate or examine the mobile devices or any handheld devices 
Now, since the technology is constantly changing, uh, there is no set standard on how uh, the phones or the mobile phones would be examined. There are iOS based mobile phones, there are Android based mobile phones, there are Windows based mobile phones and we have blackberry and then symbian and uh, lots of other different kind of operating systems which are available on the mobile phones so in order to investigate different operating systems on the mobile phones you need different tools for those things uh, new phones come out with about every six months and they are rarely compatible with the previous models even the securities are constantly being updated on the mobile phones uh, which becomes a little bit difficult for the uh, software vendors to uh, cope with the latest trends and the kind of security principles which are being adopted by different mobile phones. Now let's understand uh, the basics of mobile phones. Mobile phone technology has advanced rapidly. We all know that. A uh, long time ago we used to have GSM mobile phones uh, with the long antenna on that and then they disappeared. Uh, the mobile phones were there like Nokia 3310 uh, where the antenna disappeared and then it came mobile phone with some light on it and games and then it came to the color display small display and then it kept on changing with PDA and then the touch mobile phones so it, it covered a, a its own path in order to uh, have the new generations of the mobile phones by the end of 2008 mobile phones had gone through the three generations from analog to digital personal communication, PCS, and then the third generation, 3G mobile phones were out there, moving towards the 4G, and now we have 4G available uh, in most of the cellular companies around the world. Now, the 4G technology, several technology networks uh, are used in the mobile phone industry, expected to finalize by 2020, which is already done. Um, we are already enjoying the 5G services in most of the countries. The 3G standard was developed by International Telecommunication Union under the United Nations. It was compatible with CDMA, the old technology that we were using, GSM, and the TDMA. The enhanced data uh, GSM environment standard was developed specifically for the 3G technology so that we can enjoy the internet access on the mobile phones. 4G networks uh, can use the following technologies. We have OFDM, Mobile Vimax. Um, Vimax was uh, very successful. Even some organizations were providing internet services at home uh, where you were supposed to install um, a small um, antenna on your rooftop and then the cable used to come at home and it used to give you the internet access through that. And then came Ultra Mobile Broadband multiple input and output memo and then uh, the latest one that we were using with the 4g was lte long-term evolution now inside the mobile devices mobile devices can range from simple phones to smartphone tablets and smart watches now you can see there are three things in this one smartphones tablets and smart watches uh, again i'm repeating the same thing that they can be on ios uh, it means that Apple operating system or it could be an Android operating system which is quite famous in the industry. Now they have different devices like smartphone, tablets and smartwatches are there. There are lots of new gadgets are coming. So the data retrieval from the smartphones is a slightly different than from the tablets. The technology is almost the same but the due to the hardware nature of it, uh, there are some slightly different tools uh, required. Mostly the smartphone and tablets both have almost the same tools required for forensics analysis. Smart watches is a bit different these days where um, it's a small, very small device. Uh, some of them are having even the uh, SIM card enabled or they are being um, connected to your mobile phone using Bluetooth and other technologies. Now, there is another problem with that, that if they are communicating with the mobile phone via Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth have their own vulnerabilities through which uh, someone can exploit that and can get access to, to the data which is being flowing between your mobile phone um, and the smartwatches. Now, hardware components are microprocessors like ROM, uh, RAM, 
and uh, digital signal processor radio module microphone speaker hardware interface lcd even cameras etc most basic phones have the proprietary operating system installed on it although smartphones uses the same os as the pcs well i doubt it although maybe the author has a different mentality but the operating system sometimes like if he's referring to the windows operating system it's not exactly the same as on the mobile phone and devices now the phone store the system data in electronically erasable programmable read-only memory um, it enables the service providers to reprogram phones without having the physical access to the memory chips if there is a new update or if there is a new release from the vendor of your mobile phone and uh, they want to push the latest updates towards your mobile phone they are using the technology and you'll receive the updates in order to update the mobile phone so anyone cannot do it it should be only by the vendor itself unless and until if you have unlocked or rooted the android phones or you are going to jailbreak the uh, ios uh, mobile phones only then you'll be able to make the modifications to the operating system files itself where you are flashing the new operating system to the mobile phone yourself os is stored in the rom non-volatile memory so that even if the battery is removed or if your phone restarts or if it's out of battery for a longer period of time everything remains over there and it's saved so that um, nothing is being wiped out from the mobile phones um, available in even in the phone losses uh, and the power problems etc now personal pdas were there before the smartphones personal digital assistants have been the mostly replaced by ipods and ipads and other mobile devices uh, their use has shifted to more specific markets such as the medical or industrial pdas uh, still used but not that much uh, successful these days after the release of smartphones and gadgets and all those things just like we used to have pagers even before the uh, mobile phones with cd ma and uh, gsm networks etc uh, where we used to receive a missed call notification that someone is trying to call us and the charges to send a message to that pager used to be quite high Prior proprietary memory cards used in the pdas were compact flash it's just like the small memory cards which you which were used in those pdas to store the data on um, a multimedia card mmc or the secure digital card which is still used now the subscriber's identity module, which is the SIM cards that we have mobile phones, is a very important asset when you are trying to investigate anything. There is a lot of information which is stored on the mobile phone SIM, SIM cards. You can save the contacts, their full details, uh, the messages that you sent, and uh, lots of information related to that, which is mostly of a uh, critical nature when it comes to the investigations found mostly common in GSM networks uh, consisting of a microprocessor and internal memory. Uh, GSM refers to the mobile phones and the mobile stations and divides a station into two parts, the SIM card and the mobile equipment. The SIM cards come in three sizes. Uh, portability of the information makes SIM card uh, versatile. Now, since uh, they are talking about three uh, different sizes of the sim cards which are a regular sim card then there are micro sim cards and there is a nano sim card it depends what your mobile phone accepts it um, the information stored on the mobile phones is um, almost the same in three sizes it depends on the generation which generation mobile phone you're using since the technology is getting advanced so is the size of the sim card is reducing but it is uh, equally efficient as the bigger sim cards and you can store almost the same information in all of those now sim cards uh, are necessary for the mobile equipment to uh, work and serve these uh, potential purposes it identifies the subscriber on the network stores the service related information and can be used to backup the device 
uh, whether they are the small devices or these are the devices for the tracking purposes just like the ones which are used by the uh, insurance companies they are also installing the uh, devices inside the car uh, with the help of which they can identify the actual location of the uh, device or the vehicle uh, so it connects you to the cellular network having the encrypted information about uh, the networks and store the uh, uh, service related information for 4g or internet access or messaging gateway and stuff like that and then it can be used to uh, back up the stuff basic information about uh, uh, the contacts and details like that can be stored on the sim card that's why uh, sometimes uh, if we are saving the contacts on the sim card itself once we we'll switch the sim card to another mobile phone it would show you the uh, contacts which are saved on the mobile phone uh, many phones nowadays include the sd cards for the external storage uh, depends uh, some of the mobile phones are available with the uh, where you can expand the capacity of the mobile phone with the sd card and uh, can save even more information on that uh, some people try to store the information on the external SD cards the reason being that if somehow there is a problem with the mobile phone or anything like that and if the data is stored on the SD card at least you have a possibility that you can easily uh, take the information out of the mobile phone uh, but in any case for the forensics analysis and for personal use the data can be retrieved from the SD cards easily I think that's it for Today's lecture will be covering the understanding of acquisition procedures for mobile phones in our next lecture. Thank you very much.